you could try to take a close living relative of the animal that you chose and breed a bunch of them together until you get an animal with traits that roughly match the one that you wanted. This is the same basic process that made my dog Thor out of a wolf. But instead of trying to make something new and adorable, you're trying to make something old. It's called backbreeding and it can work. Like with this guy, it's called a quagga. I actually have a little uh, the toy quagga right here. It's a subspecies of zebra native to South Africa. They have stripes on the head and neck, and the stripes fade away along the body. It was hunted to extinction by 1883, but we've already been able to bring a version of it back using backbreeding. This is a really exciting approach, and it can work for both animals and plants. But it is incredibly slow. It takes many generations of zebra to get there. And it's a guessing game. You don't know which genes will appear when and which will go away. In reality, it's a cool method that's been done, but probably pretty limited. Okay, but how about option two? I remember in Jurassic Park, they pulled dinosaur DNA from blood inside a fossilized mosquito. Bingo. Dino DNA. And then they cloned the animal based on that DNA. It's all part of the miracle of cloning. Cool, let's do that. In real life though, the ingredients that you need for this method aren't just the extinct animal's DNA. You need a whole living cell because cloning is actually a very specific scientific technique. The long name is somatic cell nuclear transfer. It means removing the nucleus out of an egg cell and replacing it with the nucleus of a body or somatic cell of the animal you want to clone. And then you put that egg with its new nucleus into an animal where it can grow. 